Hi, I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to Eye to Eye. He's written two best-selling novels, both set in Afghanistan. And now Khaled Hosseini is using his social capital to help Afghan refugees. He spoke with Thalia Ashuras for CBS News Sunday morning about his work helping one of the world's largest refugee populations. I had been aware of UNHCR, of the UN Refugee Agency, and of the work in Afghanistan. Afghanistan at one point had 8 million people living as refugees abroad. And UNHCR has been very, very active in Afghanistan. You know, their mandate is to protect refugees, to um, ensure that their human rights are respected, and to provide them with, uh, you know, emergency help and shelters and that kind of thing. And they've done a lot for Afghans. Uh, since 2002, they've helped over 4 million Afghans return home and restart their lives. And as an Afghan who now was in a position to maybe do something of whatever proportion, I felt that that was just such a natural um, vehicle for me to do some humanitarian work. And so when UNHCR contacted me to work with them, I was thrilled. I was not only an admirer of their work, but I felt that it was a natural fit for us. Uh, and so I actually went with, uh, with the UNHCR to Afghanistan in September, uh, to northern Afghanistan to visit uh, recent returnees uh, from Iran and Pakistan and to see how they were faring. And I had a chance to see uh, UNHCR's work on the field uh, and the shelters that they build for people, you know, the, um, the interactions that they have with the villagers. And in many ways, uh, HCR is the, the kind of the face of the international aid to a lot of those refugees. Is it working? I mean, do you really feel it's working or helping? Well, what they do, the work that they do in Afghanistan is absolutely vital. I mean, without it, people would be in very, very bad shape. Um, and sometimes what they do is fairly minor, but makes a tremendous difference. In Afghanistan today, in these millions of people who've come back to Afghanistan, their conditions are very, very difficult. You know, they left relatively stable lives in Pakistan and Iran. And both of those countries, as you know, are putting pressure on Afghans to return home. Um, and so over 5 million Afghans have come back since 2002. And they've come to a country that is still emerging from disaster, from 30 years of war and, and conflict and droughts and famine uh, and anarchy. And the Afghan government, well-meaning as it may be, just doesn't have the means to absorb these millions of people. So they come back and their self-sufficiency is tested to these limits. And so when I went to Afghanistan, you know, in village after village, people were homeless. And they have no clean water. They have no access to schools. Their children walk, the closest to school is three hours walk away each way. Um, they don't have health care. Do you believe it'll change though? You know, certainly the involvement of the international community is essential. If, if the will of the international community falters, those people are doomed. You know, they, they can only do so much for themselves. And, and that's part of my, my, I hate to call it a message, but certainly part of my, what struck me in Afghanistan is how dependent people are on the international community not giving up on Afghanistan. The Afghan refugees have no voice. They have no face. And I don't claim to be their voice. I don't claim to be their face. But if I can lend my voice to those people and tell their stories here in the United States and somebody will hear and will make an impact on them and they will try to do something, then that's good. That's a good thing.